yeah, that was about uh, about a year or so back. I was, I was just after my first year of, of kite surfing. Um, I had uh, two Commerson's Dolphins. Uh, I was out for about four and a half hours at that, that particular day. And certainly these two were, were with me uh, you know, the, the whole time. Yeah. Very inquisitive, uh, very playful. Um, very interested in the board and also the kites. So the kites in the water, uh, they, they, they will go up to the kites and nudge it around quite a bit. Yeah. I was just having a break and uh, it's quite shallow water out there, so I was able to, to fill them underwater, yeah. Robert John Wilkinson, uh, 43 years of age and uh, work as a helicopter mechanic for British International Helicopters at MPA. The, the, the islands have a heritage of sailing out of necessity, you know, really back in the old days. You can see from some of the wrecks, like the Lady Liz here, uh, again, that was, uh, that was the main mode of transport back in the 1800s. I certainly get quite a kick out of having something which is um, you know, wind related or wind powered. You know, you're not burning any petrol or diesel or anything, so to really enjoy yourself. Just look at some of the skyscapes we, we get here. I mean, uh, you, you sort of get a, a pretty decent day or quite a stormy day or a beautiful day or whatever. I mean, you know, you know, how can you not look around and, and not appreciate you know, what, what people have got here? It's just uh, it's, it's quite unique. Sea lions don't normally eat penguins, um, but there's these two rogue guys that um, hunt the gentoos at the North Beach. The, the, the really big guy has a kind of tactic where he just lies in wait beneath where the waves break. So he just kind of goes up and down the beach like this, waiting for the penguins to come in. If you stand on the beach, the penguins come towards you, and the sea lion also comes towards you. And he usually tries to catch them just in the surf, just as they jump onto the beach. And if he doesn't manage that, he just charges out after them. And he usually usually catches them because they kind of panic. And they, you know, they're a bit slow on land. I'm Georgine Strange, and we're on New Island, a small island off the west coast of the Falklands. It's a, it's a nature reserve, so a wildlife sanctuary. I am the manager of the island, so I just look after the logistics. So I'm employed by the New Island Conservation Trust, who are the owners of the island. Scientists from all over the world come to do work here. Those are our main visitors. And film crews, yeah, lots of BBC and things like that. It's a pretty crazy place. It's, it feels, yeah, completely removed from the rest of the world in a way. Sometimes you think it's a little bit like being in a giant zoo. A lot of the diving around here is, is, is very memorable. I think some of the best diving, you know, New Island has, has been particularly good. Um, some of the interactions we have with the sea lions are fantastic. Um, sometimes they just come and play with you, sometimes they come and give you a hard time. So we've had a, certainly had a few dives where they've just come down and literally sort of danced around in front of you for a few minutes and you just sit there really sort of being entertained by them. You know, sometimes they get a little bit aggressive, um, but most of the time they're just inquisitive really. Well, the wildlife here is, is stunning, really. In places like Bird Island, New Island here, um, you know, just, you know, really remarkable wildlife. Um, I'm the Chief Executive of South Georgia Government. So I'm responsible for fisheries management, environmental management, the history, the culture of the island, and the maintaining all that sort of um, heritage around, around South Georgia. South Georgia is a very special place, I think, and most people who've been there have a great draw to go back. You know, it's got fantastic wildlife, but it's got a sort of backdrop of mountains just coming out of the ocean and, um, and a lot of history with the island as well, with Shackleton, you know, the old whaling stations. Um, really is a, a, an incredible place. been chased by a sea lion a few times. I didn't feel a bond with the sea lion, but <laughs> I don't know about a bond, but I think the wildlife certainly becomes more at peace with you if you act in a peaceful way. 
you rampage around an aisle and then take shots as you go around, that yes, you cover a lot of ground and you, you might see something unusual. But I think to get the best pictures, you want to get yourself comfortable with the wildlife, get down with it. Half the time, the wildlife will come towards you and just watch. On sea lines, I get up very early and, and look for the orcas at 4.30 in the morning. If you're sat inside and pop out for an hour, then you're unlikely to get the same photographs that somebody who, who goes out for 12 hours will. The Gen 2 penguins are, are fantastic to, to be around uh, because they, they exhibit quite a lot of character. This time of year, one of the, one of the best behaviours is one of the parents goes out to, to see to feed. Instead of giving the chick the food straight away, it often makes the chicks chase the, the parents before feeding it. Whether it's for exercise or, or, or some other reason, it's, it's a fascinating thing to see. You've learned to cast a fly. You know, you've just got to get it out in the water. A uh, good length of line out. I was probably in my 40s when I started fly fishing. I used to do a lot of spinning before then and then I started taking uh, tourist seat fishing and fly fish. So I felt that I needed to learn how to fly fish if I was going to take people out, you know, learn the techniques for down here and that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more sophisticated than just uh, throwing a spinner out. In the rivers, is, you've got to get it in the right spot with a, the fish are likely to be lying. It's a sport for me, it's not uh, a means of getting food or anything. It's, yeah, now and again I get into trouble for not taking them home, so <laughs> now and again I take one. <laughs> There's no wild horses around now. In the days when I first went to work, so a lot of them were horses. Uh, I wouldn't say they were wild, they were just unhandled. They'd just be running with a big troop until they were about four year old, and then you'd get them in and, and start breaking them in. And the method then was you used to put a piece of hide in them around their bottom jaw, called a pacow. Uh, you put the gear on them, and you had a mate with you on another horse, and someone opened the gate, and you just went out, out the gate in a big charge, really. And, made it buck or, or run, and then you, you uh, give it three good pulls on the, to bring its head in, and that was basically doing the same job as I'm doing with the weights. It just, it's, it's more vicious and uh, a lot of fun, but it's quite hard on the rider and the horse, really. So. In them days, horses were actually used for work, for round up the sheep. And, even as private use for transport, but now horses are more used for recreational purposes rather than works. So been a lot of good horses I've broke in for other people that sadly I've had to give them back to them. They are quite, you know, so you get attached to some of them. Most of them uh, when you get a real good one, it's a uh, shame to see them go back to their owners, but that's the idea you got them, you know, they pay you for your service really. Minefields here, they, they pegged them out so massive, the chance of them are actually stepping on them is probably quite low. My name is Teslin Barkman, I'm 26 and I'm a journalist at Penguin News. The local newspaper, that's what it is. Not a newspaper about penguins. I run to keep fit. For me it's it's a good chance to get out of town and listen to music and just switch off from everything and just kind of decompress. I, I like long distance running just because after about five miles is when I really get into a run and that's when I start to enjoy it. Well the last time I did the marathon I did it for the first time in 2010. And I think everyone kind of has that thing that they, they always like to do a marathon so I thought right I'd never really run that far before and I, I did the half marathon which was about a month before. And so I had about a month of training between that and the marathon to get in shape. And I didn't actually have any proper trainers. I did the thing in walking boots, <laughs> but I did it. 
The most southerly marathon in the world, and certainly the most challenging thing I've ever done. I'd really love to run a marathon somewhere where it's a bit flatter and a bit less windy, but I think if anyone's looking, any marathon runners are looking for a challenge. We've had professionals come down here before and quit, not even halfway through, so you have to be pretty tough to do this one, I think. <laughs> My favourite run is probably out from Town along the bypass to the Lady Liz and then along to Engineers Point on the Narrows because you get to go back via Gypsy Coast so you get to see penguins and World War II guns and stuff like that. And it's really awesome.